so welcome back to tutorial mane so i'm going to be continuing your physics series and this is the second video let's not waste time and let's get back into the subject in the previous video i have already spoken about the uh, ways of electrifying a substance there were three ways friction uh, con conduction and induction so i've already spoken about the friction and conduction in the previous video i'm going to be talking about the induction in this video so let's talk about what is induction what uh, necessities is the induction so let two metals a and b placed on insulating stands and are held in contact with each other as it is shown in the diagram that is there when a positively charged rod is brought near the uh, sphere a free electrons in both the spheres are attracted towards the rod and they move towards the left surface of a from the right surface of b so left surface of a acquires negative charge due to the excess electrons and the right surface of b acquires positive charge due to the definition deficiency of electrons so if the charged bodies are removed i mean that's the rod which is removed and spheres are kept with a small distance and separations the charges on the sphere rearrange themselves and uh that is because due to the force of attractions if two spheres are placed wide apart charges then the charges are equally i mean uniformly distributed into the whole metal body so there is no you know one place where is there more charge one place there is less charge so this is the whole process of induction this is how you can charge a body moving on let's see the properties of electric charge so this is a very important questions in your exams or in your tests or in any college for that matter uh they can ask you for 10 marks um in the textbook there are mainly three properties but if they ask you for 5 to 6 to 7 marks you need to give many more properties of electric charge so the first one is in charges there are two kinds protons and electrons that is our first property we also know that like charges repel each other while unlike charges attract each other it's the second point electric charge carried by the body is not affected due to its motion so if you carry an electric charge and on the body is carried and carrying an electric charge while it is moving from place to place the charge is not affected charge is in like electrified for the body so it does not get affected due to the motion okay charges always reside on the outer surface of the conductor so charges i don't think you i need to explain all this like it's all very simple you can understand it so charge is a scalar quantity and it is derived physical quantity so it's a scalar quantity do you guys know what scalar means it has only magnitude and there is no direction for so that is what charge is no particular direction in which it has to move or something like that so charge is a scalar quantity and it is a derived physical quantity as well charges are conserved so okay guys the next three which i'm going to be talking about is very important because these are the three main properties of the electric charge and even if you miss out any points from the above five you can't miss the below three because that's the most important part of the electric charge so charges are conserved what does it exactly mean so the algebraic sum of the charges of an isolated system remains constant that is charges carried by the system are neither created be nor be destroyed so if in an isolated tub remember in an isolated tub there are many charges so the algebraic sum even if you remove an electron or add two protons or if you remove a proton and add two electrons or for that matter anything the charges the algebraic sum is always constant it does not change that is because the charges can be neither created nor be destroyed charges are conserved the next one is charges are additive in nature if a system contains number of point charges the total charge of the system is the algebraic sum of all the charges present anywhere on it so if a system contains particular point charges 1 1 1 1 1 so if you have to calculate the total charge of the system always you have to calculate the algebraic sum but in this you don't divide it into space like you know that's the other space this is the other space so wherever it is in the place and any charge for that matter the algebraic sum is calculated so that is what is meaning charges are additive in nature the 
last one is charges are quantized the amount of charge on a body can be expressed as an integral multiple of an electric charge that is q is equals to plus or minus ne um so now you know q stands for charge e stands for electron n is a multiple integral multiple integral multiple can be like 1 2 3 4 that is integral multiple and uh, that is nothing but the amount of charge on a body can be expressed as a integral multiple of electronic charge moving on the first law which we're going to be learning in the chapter that is the coulomb's law which is very important you need to know what coulomb law is they might ask you for derivation and you have to state the statement the statement goes like this the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between any two point stationary charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the two charges and inversely proportional to the square of distance of separation between them force always acts along the line joining the two charges wow i know it's a big statement but it is pretty simple see it's very simple. the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion it can be attracting if it's both are a positive i know you know if attraction is when under charges are there repulsion when same like charges are there so between any two point stationary charges directly proportional to the product of magnitude of the two charges and inversely proportional to the distance of between them i want to show you this is the what the statement means so see i'll explain to you maybe you'll understand much better way so this is the two point charges it is stationary so these are both are like charges so they are repelling each other so the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between any two point stationary charges so point point is directly proportional to the product of magnitude magnitude is this value magnitude uh, between them and is inversely proportional to the distance square of the distance so r square between them and the force acts along the line joining the two charges so this is uh, for uh, like charges this is for unlike charges i am just going to erase that so that you can see properly unlike charges This is attraction, so this is a uh, one second. This is attraction. This is repulsion. Moving on, from Coulomb's law, from the statement, force is directly proportional to the magnitude, this and this, and inversely proportional to r square distance. So this is a directly proportional ka symbol. F is equals to k into q one q two divided by r square. So where k is a constant of proportionality whose value depends on the medium in which the charges are placed. So the medium can be air, vacuum, water, glass, anything for that matter. So let's move on and understand, guys. This formula is very important. You're going to be having problems based on it. So please do remember. moving on so we going to find the value for like the, for the equation for air or in vacuum so we need to know what the value of k is k is nothing but 1 by 4 pi epsilon not so now what is epsilon not epsilon not is absolute permittivity of space this has a permanent constant value that is 8.854 in 10 to the power of minus 12 force fm minus 1 that is the unit you need to remember the unit you need to remember the value you need to remember what epsilon not is everything is important so when we substitute this in the previous equation f of air or vacuum is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not in place of k and q1 q2 and r square understood 
so this i am highlighting it because it is very very important you have to remember it because you need to solve problems and physics is mainly based on problems and there's one more important matter that is epsilon not value sometimes it is given in the question sometimes it is not given so to be on the safer side if you remember it it's more um convenient for you so please do remember it so for other medium k by 1 by 4 pi epsilon so now here it is only epsilon not here there is no epsilon not can you see that difference so yeah pe now here epsilon means absolute permittivity of medium okay absolute permittivity of medium that is absolute permittivity of space so e is equals to e not epsilon not epsilon r that is relative permittivity of medium it has a different value so now we saw uh, for the both the mediums which we i have shown you um so for f medium 1 by 1 second 4 in place of epsilon not in the previous uh, equation now here you'll have epsilon not and epsilon r so you need to remember this equation as well as for the medium part that is for the air and vacuum so now um this value e epsilon r is different for different 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 mediums so for free space is 1 1.0005 for air 1.0007 so look at the difference it's 0.0002 for water vapor that is 7 for water vapor 5 to 10 for glass 78 for water that is water vapor is water and infinite for perfect conductor and zero for perfect insulator so this is the end of the video guys so thank you for watching tutorial money hope you like it please do subscribe share and shower your love for more videos keep watching thank you